Finally, I think that uh, I want also to be optimistic because it's very clear that what I was talking about up, up to now is a huge, powerful alliance first included Britain, then the United States, then multinational cooperation. The Palestinians really, I mean, were facing an alliance so powerful economically, politically, strategically. And it's all focused on the idea of this project of displacement and replacement, displacing the Palestinians and replacing them. It's, it's, it's almost incredible that they're still there fighting showing resilience and resistance. This is also what my book taught me once and more, once more, that how, how unbelievable is the fact that Palestine and the Palestinians are still there. It's not taken for granted. But what brings me hope, and for me hope, I want to explain that nobody misunderstand what I mean for me. Hope for me is the end of Israel and the creation of a free Palestine from the river to the sea. What brings me hope is the fact that uh, the powerful lobby and the alliance were very effective when it comes to politics from above. They, from the very early on, they understand that all they have to do is follow politicians at the early stages of their career, making sure that they are allies in a later stage in their career, using money, influence, uh, uh, intimidation if needed, in order to get whether the American or the British political system to abide by their demands. However, they find it very difficult and always found it very difficult to deal with the civil society. They know, don't know how to deal with alternative media today. They have no idea how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with civil society, with communal action, with boycott initiatives, with divestment initiatives. All their methodology, all the weaponry, that they, all the armory that they have is useless, it seems, against people. That should give us hope. And the hope is that probably this is not the only issue uh, in which the politicians of this particular era are not representing us well. I don't remember as an historian at an age like this when politics, and I'm generalizing, of course, that politicians were of such a low caliber, <laughs> intellectually, morally, corrupt, shallow, reductionist, people who have very little to offer their society apart from their own careers. It doesn't matter which party. It's really uh, a, 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 the age of, of the, 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 the lack of any status for the politicians. So their ideas of how to deal with global warming, how to deal with poverty, how to deal with issues that really trouble people are not very interesting and are not very successful and are not very effective because they don't care about these issues. They care about their own careers. It's not surprising that also their ideas about Palestine are irrelevant and are harmful and negative. So we should hope that when people struggle against this lobby, they're also struggling against lobby, other lobbies that make their life miserable and, and disable them to solve problems of poverty, ecological danger, injustices in society beyond the question of Palestine. I think this explains why so many people are galvanized behind the Palestine question as symbolizing struggle against injustices anywhere else in the world as well. And Palestine is an indication that there is a different kind of politics that we would wish for ourselves, for our next generations. And that's why so many hopes are pinned on the Palestinian liberation movement, sometimes probably un un unreasonably, actually, that Palestine would be the, you know, the paragon state that all the other failed decolonized world uh, was unable to, to fulfill. But it explains, because this is an a demand for a different kind of politicians and a different kind of the idea, what is universal justice? This is the big challenge the ICJ and the ICC are having. It's not a, it's not a, a coincidence that for the first time, they at least provided a stage for what people think about Palestine and not governments, if you think about it. And they did it intentionally. 
I talked with them, some of them. They did it intentionally. They wanted to show that tribu international tribunals are also listening to people, not just to the politics of power. Hopefully, this is just the beginning of a process that would lead for a better world, first of all, for the Palestinians, and then for all of us. Thank you. Well